for you today. And uh, before we, as you're turning there, I want to make mention, uh, Good Friday. How many make, are making plans to be in church on Good Friday? Um, we're, we're really, for, Good Friday is special. Good Friday is a part of the entire Easter experience. How many believe that? You know, the cross of Jesus Christ, the role it plays in our life. And I'm excited that this year we're having uh, two Good Friday services that will be going on simultaneously. The first will be here, and that starts at 7 o'clock here in our sanctuary. Usually gets packed out, invite somebody, bring somebody. But I'm also excited that for the first time, we'll be having a Good Friday service in the city of Chula Vista. Chula Vista. And they are in their second week. We, we've, we've, we've rented a building. It seats 200 people. And they're in their second week. And, and this week, this second Tuesday that they, uh, excuse me, second Friday that they've met, they had 16 new people come into that service. And how many of you will pray for Chula Vista? It, it's a big city. 220,000 people live in Chula Vista. Does anyone here live in Chula Vista? Let me see. Lift up your hand. Oh, a lot of you. A lot of you. So you love your city? Well, guess what? Victor Outreach. We're going to take Chula Vista, Chula Vista for Jesus. We're going to lead people to Jesus in Chula Vista. Amen. So if you'd like to back them up, you can back them up. Be a part of that Good Friday service over there in Chula Vista. It's a great place. And let me tell you something about the music there. The music is awesome. Um, we have our very own Shayna Brown. So, girl, you know it's good. You know it's good. Amen. Okay. Luke chapter 18, go with me to verse 2, and I'm going to do my best to read this without my glasses, but here we go. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, someone say for a while. Afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. I will avenge her. Praise God. This morning, I want to speak to you a subject on, pers on the subject of persistence. Persistence. Amen. I can't think of a better message to speak than persistence on passion week. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Persistence. I was thinking of what to share as we uh, start the Passion Week. And today is the, 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 the Palm Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Passion Week. This is uh, when Jesus went into Jerusalem and the the, uh, uh, the events of Passion Week are significant within our life. They, they, they stir up a, a passion for God, a passion for life, and a passion to do God's work. But I want to talk to you on the subject that I believe every Christian needs, uh, a, a quality that every Christian needs in order to fulfill God's plan within their life. I believe that to be persistence. Everybody say persistence. I think if anyone here this morning wants to uh, run this race and be effective in life, you're going to need some persistence within your life. Why is it important? Well, I want to tell you that persistence equals fulfillment. God gives us a vision so that we could fulfill that vision. And persistence equals fulfillment. I want you to know this, Victor Arch San Diego. I believe this with all my heart is that your season is coming. Your season of blessing is coming. Does anyone believe that today? I believe that your season is coming. And I want to tell you this. I believe your season is coming in a big way. It's coming in a strong way. It's coming stronger than you're anticipating. I think it's worthy to stir up faith a little bit. Because if you've been working hard for the Lord, get ready. Because your season is coming and your season is coming strong. But I just believe it's going to be better than you thought it was going to be. And it's going to be a season of fulfilled promises in your life. 
Now, the primary reason for success in this journey, and this journey encompasses every area of our life, is persistence. Uh, and so in like manner, where it takes persistence to see something come to pass, in like manner, the primary reason for failure is the lack of persistence or quitting too soon. See, what I want to talk to you about today is I want to talk to you about running the race to the finish. Not just starting something, but fulfilling that thing that God has given you. I want to talk to you about starting something and taking it all the way to the finish line, because that's what Jesus did. On Friday, when we gather, we're going to hear the words that Jesus said on Calvary. He says, it is finished. How many are glad he finished the work? God bless half of you. How many are glad he finished the work? We, we, we're called to finish. Whatever God has given us to do, we're called to finish. Whatever God has given us to start, we're called to finish. In, in Galatians 6 9, the Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, and, and that's the word, your due season is on its way. But don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, guess what? You're going to reap the harvest. You're going to reap the harvest, but you can't lose heart. Do me a favor this morning. Just touch your neighbor right now. And some of you need to wake up a little bit. Touch your neighbor. And tell him, wake up and don't lose heart. Tell him again, wake up and don't lose heart. Because your due season is on its way. See, anything that you desire to accomplish in life has a built-in temptation into it. A temptation is built into your vision. What is that temptation? It's the temptation to quit. Anytime God gives you a vision or life begins to give you a vision, an idea, Guess what? There's a built-in temptation, and that temptation is to quit. And many people quit. Obstacles, diversions, hardships, excuses are all the things that try to stir up a quitting spirit in a man. All these things stir up a quitting spirit in a woman. They want to rouse that quitting spirit. But here's what I want to tell you. If you've ever felt like quitting, I've got some good news for you. You're probably doing something worthwhile. Because it, when it's easy, you don't feel like quitting. But when God gives you something that's hard, and I, I know I'm speaking to somebody this morning, when God gives you something that's hard, when God gives you a vision that's bigger than yourself, when God gives you a supernatural, miraculous vision, you better believe that. It's built into that vision that there's going to be times when you feel like quitting. But here's what I want to tell you. Don't quit because your season's coming. Your blessing's on the way. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Come on, get happy right now. Get happy and give him praise. You got to continue because your results are on the way. See, we've been talking a little bit about faith, and I want to tell you, what is faith? I mentioned it last week. I'll mention it again. Faith is working when you don't fully understand the mission. There's some of you in church right now, you've been working for God, working for God, working for God, and every now and then you've got to stop. You've got to stop and say, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> Come on, somebody. What am I doing? I don't fully understand this mission. I don't fully understand what I got myself involved in. I don't fully understand why. I mean, I've been serving God five years or ten years, and sometimes i got to take a step back, and, and I've got to say, what, what am I here for? Well, I came to tell you Abraham had to do that. Noah had to do that. God called Abraham by faith, and there were times where Abraham was looking for a city. He didn't know what that city looked like. He didn't know what the name of that city was. All God told him is when you get there, you're going to know it's me. And that's a word for someone right now that you might feel like quitting. You might feel like giving up. You might need to have your passion stirred up. I came to tell you, me, you may not fully understand the vision, but keep on pressing. Keep on fighting, because when you get there, you're going to know it's God. Noah kept on building. He had never seen rain. He had never, he didn't even know what a boat or a ship was, but he kept on building. And how many know rain eventually began to fall? That's your word. Rain is coming. That's your word. Rain is coming. It's going to be a good rain. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a shower. It, for some of you, it's going to be a hurricane. You've been working so hard for God. You've been laboring so hard for God. You, you need to open up your mind and open up your heart and get ready. Because when God sends it, it's coming bigger than you ever thought. It's coming better than ever. Come on, somebody. God has something better for you than you have for yourself. Keep on pressing on. Press to the finish. God 
Here, I, I got to tell you, God wants that vision to happen. God wants that vision to happen. You say, well, why? Why does God want that? I'll tell you why he wants that. Because God wants everybody in your life and everyone around you to know how good he is to you. <laughs> all of those critics, all of those negative people, all those people that try to pull you down. All of those rebellious children you have. Come on, somebody. That are always saying, why do you go to jail? Why are you, why are you always telling me to? Why, why are you always boss me around? He wants all those. Come on, somebody. All those troublemakers in your life to know how good he is to you. Guess what? He's getting ready to bless you. He's getting ready to raise you up. He's getting ready to show up and show out in your life. But you need to stay persistent. You need, you need to stay in the fight. Real quick, a short word this morning. What do persistent people do? If you're taking notes, write this down. Number one, persistent people talk themselves into continuing. <laughs> you said, Pastor, is it, are you telling me it's okay to talk to myself? I'm here to tell you, uh, yeah, just don't let it come out of your mouth. <laughs> so I love this scripture because this woman was so persistent. She made the judge talk to himself. You know, you got to watch how you talk to yourself. You, you got to watch the conversations you have with yourself. Come on, you know the ones you have with yourself when you're in your car and you're driving. I remember my mom used to get so mad at my dad. That she'd be driving and I'd be in the back seat and I could hear her talking to herself, mad at my dad. This man, come on, somebody. This woman, come on, somebody. We gotta watch how you talk to yourself. People who are persistent, they, they talk themselves into continuing. See, this this woman, she had some the right self-talk, she had the positive self-talk. No matter the weather, no matter how she felt in the morning, she still talked herself to get getting up and going to court. I'm sure she had a million excuses of why she shouldn't have went that day, right? But she had the ability to talk herself out of bed to get herself over to that courthouse. See, self-talk is so important. It's so important to our success. I've learned this, that you can either talk yourself into something or you can talk yourself out of something. See, the people that succeed, they know how to keep talking themselves into the future, talking themselves into staying in the fight, talking themselves into serving God, talking themselves into getting into God's vision. Come on, help me preach a little. They know how to talk themselves into it, but people who fail, they know how to talk themselves out of things. And I want to tell you, never talk yourself out of a blessing. <laughs> never talk yourself out of a blessing. Never talk yourself out of the promises of God. Never talk yourself out of a marriage that got brought together. Never talk. Oh, you ain't saying nothing to me. Don't talk to yourself like that. Don't talk to yourself like that. Start talking to yourself and say, God's got a big plan for my life. God's not done with me yet. The best is yet. Do I got anybody here? The best is yet to come. Everything's going to be all right. God is working for my good. Learn how to talk to yourself. There's a part of Abraham's story that always impacted me that when after the Lord told him to sacrifice his son. The next verse says the next morning he woke up and went. And I think to myself, what happened that night? The Bible doesn't give any record of him complaining. In fact, that, that was the quietest night. There was complete silence that night. God gave him a hard thing to do, an impossible thing to do, something that we would not be willing to do. But Moses did not complain. Moses didn't question God. Moses didn't flee to a cave. Come on, somebody. He just got up in the morning, rose up, 
trusted the Lord when he got to the mountaintop. He saw the goodness of God. God says, I've seen your obedience. Look to the right. There was a ram in the thicket. Come on, somebody. God blessed him. And then what God did is God promoted him. Watch how you talk to yourself. The second thing that persistent people do, short message this morning, is they don't quit. They don't quit. Christians who don't quit, they get promoted in the kingdom. Christians who don't give up, who don't throw on the towel, they get promoted. How many of you say, you know what, Pastor, I'm, I, I, I believe in that God's going to promote me. You say, oh, that's arrogant. Why is that arrogant? You want to get promoted at work, don't you? How many of you are believing for God to promote you? Okay, because if, if, if you're not believing for promotion, then we're not on the same page. How many of you are believing to have like the prayer of Jabez? Lord, enlarge my territory. Make my name great. Come on, somebody. How many hold on to Isaiah 54, 2 and 3? Enlarge the place of my tent. Stretch out the curtains of my dwelling. I'm not going to hold back. Who is believing God to promote them, to take them to it? Am I in the right church this morning? Maybe I pulled up to the wrong church. See, people who don't quit get promoted. See, right when you feel like quitting, Right when the storm seems the strongest, that's when the promotion is right around the corner. So don't quit. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't, don't quit. There, there's three things about persistent people. I want you to write these things down. Number one, persistent people, they don't quit praying and depending on God. Persistent people don't quit praying. They don't quit depending on God. Jesus said to his disciples, we should always pray and never give up. He tells the story to them in a parable, and he starts out by saying, this is that men would pray and never give up. If, if that's all you hear this morning, then that's all you need. If that's all you hear this morning and in this first day of Passion Week, then that's all you need. Never stop praying and, and don't give up. Never stop praying and don't give up. See, Jesus said, pray, never give up. That's how great things will happen in your life. You want to see great things and keep on praying, never give up. Second thing about persistent people is this is good. They don't quit until they receive what they're believing for. And when I was when I was d diving into this point, as I'm preparing for this sermon, something came came alive in my spirit. And, and the Lord told me to ask you, church, this morning. What are you believing for? Is that a fair question? What, what are you believing for? Or, or maybe I should rephrase it. Are you believing for anything? Are, are, you, are, are, are you believing for any? Or here's another way to put it. Do you still believe? Come on, somebody. Because I'll tell you this, is that in life, in this life we live, hear me, hear me clear. It's death not to believe. It's death. It's spiritual death not to believe. If you can come to a church on Sunday and sing the songs and walk out of here not believing for anything, you're dead. Woo! If you can open up this book, this Bible in the morning and read a few Psalms and a couple of Proverbs, close it and not believe for anything, you're dead. Oh, I got to talk about it. Some of the saints of old know what I'm talking about because it's vision that keeps us alive. It's belief that keeps us alive. There are too many people that live to 70 and die at 40. Oh, my God. When they were 20, they were on fire. When they were 30, they were on fire. You know why they were on fire? I'll tell you why. Because they were believing for things. And God messed around and got so good in their life. God messed around and got so good in their life, he started blessing them. <laughs> he started increasing them. He started giving them that spouse. With, them ugly, with their ugly self. And God says, I'm giving you that spouse. I know you're ugly. 
But I'm giving you that spouse because I want everybody to know how much I love you. Come on and help me pre- help your preacher. You didn't deserve her. You didn't deserve him. But God gave them to you because he wanted all your critics and all of your enemies to know that he was alive in your life. Come to pass. Yes, I've been blessed. Yes, God has been good. Yes, we have a beautiful church. Yes, I have a beautiful loyal wife. Yes, I have beautiful children. Yes, I live in a beautiful home. Yes, I drive a nice car. Yes, I'm blessed financially. Yes, I got all this stuff. Yes, my health is doing okay. But I declare to you on this Sunday morning, on this Passion Week, that God is not done with me yet. And I came to tell you the same thing. God is not done with you either. He wants you to rise up this morning and start to believe him. Watch this. Not for more wine. He wants you to believe him for a bigger cup. Come on and clap if you got that point. He wants you to believe for bigger bigger things. There's things that God still wants to do. I want to live my life. For God, this Passion Week, and I say to the Lord this, and I think some of you should say this as well. I, I, I say, Lord, I want you to squeeze every last drop out of my life. I want you to squeeze every last drop out of my life, and I'm going to live my life in a way where I bug you for things. Mm. You know why I, I'm going to bug you? like this woman bugged the judge, is because in Matthew 7, verse 7, he says, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Man, I'm preaching good, and some of you are not helping me. (laughs) He says, keep asking, keep preaching, and keep knocking. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, God, uh, there's so much more I'm believing for. You're not done with me yet. And and I'm going to come to your door, and and, and I'm going to knock. And and I'm going to come over, and I'm going to say, hey, Lord, I need my kids to get saved. Hey, Lord, I need you to do a miracle. Hey, Lord, there's some ministry that God has called us to do in the world. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to knock. And the Lord in his goodness is going to bless me. And then when he blesses me, I'm going to pay him another visit. Hey, Lord, there's some more stuff I'm believing for. And then he's going to bless me again, and I'm going to walk away. But, and then I'm going to come back, and, and, and I'm not going to and come on somebody, and I'm going to keep on knocking. And let me tell you something. I'll never get on the Lord's nerves. The way your kids get on your nerves and you get on people's nerves and they don't answer your calls, guess what? My Lord always picks up the phone. Now, let me tell you why you get, why, why people get on your nerves when they knock on your door is because you don't have what they need. But the reason the Lord won't get annoyed by me is because heaven is not bankrupt. <laughs> right when I think I have enough. Right when I think heaven can't do another miracle. Right when I think that not more can't happen. I knock on the door and the Lord says, you haven't seen nothing yet. I own a cattle on a thousand hill. Keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking. When you get your faith back like that, that's when you come alive again. That's when your shout comes back. That's when your prayer life comes back. Give God a good praise right now. I'm done preaching. Let me give you this last thing. They don't quit. And they keep persisting. We're talking about persistent people. Are are we on the same page here? They don't quit because they know the process is maturing them. The process of waiting and learning to be persistent and not giving up that in itself matures you. See, we're, we're getting ready to build this building. How many can't wait to see it happen? How many are going to be here? You know? It's happening. It's actually happening. We're going to give out hammers today. We're not going to be able to hit anything because I already tore down the whole entire sound booth. 
The city is getting ready to approve us. I mean, great things are happening, parking, all kinds of stuff. Tell your neighbor, it's happening. And so we're building this building. We're going to 1,200 seats. But I want to tell you, this is not a new vision. This is a vision that I had a long time ago, many years ago. But you may ask, well, why didn't it happen then? I'll tell you why. I wasn't ready then. Young people hear me. Why didn't that vision happen then? Because I wasn't ready then. I remember being home way back in 2008, and we were having some challenges with our men's home, and we needed some funds, some finances. We were short, maybe about $5,000, and we really needed some money. The church was not in a place to bail out the home. The home couldn't find work. They couldn't get any. It was just dry. It was during the peak of the recession. And I remember doing at that time what I knew to do best is call my pastor. Come on, somebody. His name's Pastor Sonny. And I called him. I said, Pastor, we're having a challenge with our home, and I, and I, I, I need some help, or else I may have to close the home. And he said, how many guys you got in the home? I said, we have about 20 guys. He says, what do you need? I said, I need about five, $6,000 to get the home out of the hole. And I was expecting him to give me the money. This is my hero. This is, this is my preacher. This is my man of God. This is my spiritual father. Come on, somebody. And what he told me next just shifted me. This is what he said. He said, Al, I could give you this money. I could help you get the home out of the hole. But if I give you this money, you'll never grow. My God. Not the answer I wanted to hear. So what are you saying? I got to close the home? No, you need to call God. You need to trust God. And wouldn't you know that God came through? I mean, God always comes through. Come on, somebody. But I needed that process. I needed to learn how to believe God for $5,000. I needed to, I had this big vision of pushing back this wall, but I couldn't believe God for $5,000. You know how much this wall is going to cost? This wall, this little wall, this dumb wall. It's going to cost a million bucks. So that's an expense. Is that made out of gold? It's just a wall. But it's going to cost us a million dollars when it's all said and done. And if I tried to do it in 2008, how was I going to do it if I couldn't believe God for $5,000? You know what happens to me today? I get up in the morning and I got five text messages and phone calls, people asking me, for $5,000 on each text. The other day, I had so many calls. I need 10 here. I need 10,000 here. I need 15,000 here. We're raising pledges for the. I need 20,000 here. And you know, in 2008, I probably would have had a seizure. <laughs> but I get up in the morning and I said, mm -mm. God has enlarged me. God has built me. It ain't nothing but a thing. And God is able to come through on every one of those requests. Can I hear a good amen? Come on and give God a prayer. And here's the beauty of it. God hasn't just done it in me. He's done it in you. He's done it in each and every one of you. You're bigger than you've ever been. You're stronger than you've ever been. You walk taller than you've ever been. We need the process. Because the process builds us to the place. Watch this where things can happen. Let, let me tell you, man, and I'm, I'm going to close. <laughs> It'd be a shame if you got to the point of this level of growth and then quit. <laughs> man, it would be a shame if, if you went through every all those trials. I'm going to just preach to five of you because I know only five of you go through trials. It would be a shame if you went through all those trials. You went to all those prayer meetings. 
You fasted all those days. You gave all those finances. You prayed for all those people. You hit those streets that many times. Talk to me. Help me, help me, help me, help me. It would be a shame that you came to a thousand church services, made a thousand altar calls, went on 20 missions trips, was in the home a year, the UTC a year, to grow to the place you are now and throw in the towel. I came to tell you the devil is a liar. You're better than you've ever been. You're stronger than you've ever. Come on and clap and celebrate the goodness of the Lord in this place. Touch your neighbor and tell him you've come too far by faith. Be seated one more moment. And, 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 and the final thing is about persistent people. Did you get some this morning? Is they press and they push through weariness. They press and they push through weariness. A fight is only simply won through something called endurance. And many of you know I love boxing. Any boxing fans out there, you love boxing? You know I love it. I go to the fights. I've met a lot of the professional fighters. I'll be at the Canelo fight in May. I, I mean, I just love it. But what I love about it is that boxing reminds me of ministry. Because you can win by skill or you can win by endurance. And one thing I've found is that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You could be the most talented person here. You could sing like an angel, like a seraphim. You could be the most best looking person, best dressed person. You could preach better than me, preach me in circles. You could be more likable than me. You could have, you know, everything I don't have. But if you don't work it, Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And what I love about boxing is that it's not always the most skilled fighter that wins. It, it, it's the fighter that's been persistent in training. Ooh. It's amazing to see a talented fighter get broken down over 12 rounds by somebody that was willing to run more than him and be in the gym more than him and eat better than him and abstain from stupidity more than him. Why do skilled people think that they could cut corners? Let me tell you where it's going to show up. It's going to show up when you're in the middle of the fight with the enemy. The people that make it, are the ones that train their limits, push their limits. It's the ones that may not have it all together on the outside, but there's a fire in their soul. There is a passion in their heart. Come on, somebody. They've got something that other people don't have. And when I look at this woman, she needed a miracle. She needed vengeance. She needed justice. She had no connection. She had no help. She had no husband. She had no advocate. But she had something that we need. She had persistence. She had endurance. You know what she did? She wore her enemy out. You know what Babe Ruth said? The great baseball player? He said, it's tough to beat someone who just won't give up. And I came to tell you, don't give up. I came to tell you in the middle, don't give up. I came to tell you, don't give up. Don't give up. Stay in the fight. Stay persistent. Let God turn your passion. Let God stir your passion. Let God light you on fire once again. Woo! Because I'll tell you this. I'm going to close. When we quit, you can stand. When people quit, listen to this and hear this clear. What? There's not a better message on Passion Week than this one, right? She wore out her enemy, but lastly, finally, when people quit, it changes the narrative. 
There was a power encounter between her and the judge who won. He said, this woman is going to wear me out. He'd get up in the morning. He'd be brushing, he'd, he'd be brushing his teeth. And she'd already be at the courthouse with her purse. He'd be getting out of shot, blow drying his hair. She'd already be there with her big old purse, first in line, like, wait till this sucker gets here. But when you quit, it changes the narrative. The narrative is that you're supposed to win, not lose. And let me talk to some of you here who have quit too many times. The narrative changes. When people backslide, when they quit, the narrative changes. People say, what happened to you? Why don't you go to church anywhere? Weren't you going to church? Why are you drinking with us? The whole narrative just shifted on you. <laughs> Man, you were going there for years. Why are you smoking pot? Man, you remember how you were telling everybody about the Lord and how you, you were on Facebook hollering Jesus? Now you're turning up and putting music videos and cussing. It's quiet in here. Why is it so quiet, Pastor Mark? Because when you quit, the story shifts. Don't quit. Weren't you going to Victory Outreach? Weren't, weren't you were there. You were a Victor. You had the, the shirt that said Mighty Women of Valor. What was that shirt you had? You had the lion. You would come around. We'd see the lion, and 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 and, and you were at the conference, and, and you. I even spot you. Go to the car, and now you, you left the church. You're over here now. The narrative changed. You know what I'm just trying to do this morning through this message? I'm trying to keep some of you from having to start over. Because the end is this. If you quit, you're going to go. You're going to go. And then you're going to be a ninja back there. Because everybody knows you're Victor Outreach. You're going to be over here like. Too real? And then you're not going to like it. It's not the same. You can't talk to the pastor. It's not the same. They're not family. They just look at you, and if you're not in, you ain't in. And you're going to be all back here in the cut over there like this. And then you guys say, I don't want to be here no more. I got to go back to Victory Outreach because that's where God did the miracle in my life and the miracle in my family. And man, I got a lot of seed over there in Victory Outreach. And I made a lot of altar calls over there in Victory Outreach. And I put a lot of finances over there in Victory Outreach. So I might as well stick it out. I might as well fight the good fight of faith in the good times and the bad. I want you to go ahead and give God the biggest praise you can right now. On and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. So, what, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Uh, Jesus, yeah, we got Jesus. Hopefully, if you need Jesus, you can get him today. But we, a lot of us have him. But you know what Jesus needs from us? What do you need? I'll tell you right now. This is it right here. You want it? You ready? You need to start believing for bigger things. 
Come on, somebody. Don't ask God for more wine. Ask him for a bigger cup. Throw that little Starbucks mug away. Be like that woman, the prophet said, go get some pots. We were talking about persistence. Now we're on something different. But whatever, God's moving right now. Holy Ghost is moving. He said, go get some pots. And don't just get a few. Go get as many as you can. So she started knocking. You got a pot? Here you go. You got a pot? You got a pot? And she came home with all these pots. And she locked herself in the room. And the anointing oil started to flow. Come on, somebody. Start to flow. And the Bible says... When she ran out of pots, that's when the anointing stopped. So some of you need some more pots. You need to start believing again. I'm not satisfied. Who wants everything? Who wants more? Who's ready for God to do a new thing in your life? Passion Week. Who wants to get their passion back? Get their faith back? Get their fire back? Come on, help me. Who, who wants it? Who's ready? Who wants the pots? So I want to pray for those of you that say, Pastor, I got to start believing for bigger things. Get to this altar quick. Get to this altar quick. You're not going to die. No way. No way. No way. No how. God's been too good. but he's